Welcome back to our course Introduction to Quantum Optics. Today we want to discuss the beam splitter and first start off with a discussion of the classical beam splitter, noting how classical waves are transformed from the input ports of a beam splitter to the output ports of the beam splitter. And in the next class we'll extend this then to the quantum case. So let's get started. So here's a general description, here's a general picture, abstract picture of such a beam splitter and we really don't need to go into the details of optics of how this thing works. We'll just make some very general assumption what needs to be kind of fulfilled on such a beam splitter. So it's a device where you have two input ports E1, E2 and two output ports E3, E4 where you put electromagnetic fields in and out come electromagnetic fields. And so in general what we want to know is what are the input-output relations, how are the output fields related to the input field or vice versa. So this can in general of course be described by the following way. We see that the light field coming out for example on port 3 that can arise due to a transmission of light coming here, light field E2. So this will T times E2 where T is kind of a transmission coefficient, a complex transmission coefficient which can tell us how the magnitude of the field changes as it goes to the output and if there's a phase shift. So this complex coefficient can also have a phase associated with it so there can also be a phase shift on this beam splitter. And the other case we have is a reflection where we can have R E1 where light from port 1 is reflected and the output light on port 3 is just a superposition of R E1 plus T E2. So these R and T, they are just complex coefficients. And of course we see that a similar relation now holds for the light coming out E4 on port E4. That's kind of a transmitted light of port E1 plus reflected light of port E2. And in general these coefficients don't have to be the same, they can be different. So the output here E3, E4, the output fields are related to the input fields here through this kind of transformation matrix that we write down here. And next we want to simplify the discussion and kind of simplify it to the case of what we call so called the so-called symmetrized beam splitter. So in this symmetric beam splitter we have these reflection coefficients and transmission coefficients being exactly the same. So that's possible to realize. We don't again want to go into the detail but we'll now have to ask what are the conditions that R and T have to fulfill uh, with respect to each other. Well one important thing of course we have to note is that we have to have energy conservation. So all the light that comes into the beam splitter has to go out of the beam splitter. So for example let's say you have no light coming in on port E2 so let's say E2 is 0 then E3 is just R E1 and E4 is just T E1 so the transmitted light on E1 or the reflected light here uh, from E1 and intensity of the outgoing fields, the energy density of the outgoing fields, that's proportional to norm E3 squared. That's norm R squared, norm E1 squared, and norm E4 squared. That's norm T squared, norm E1 squared. And of course the sum of norm E3 squared and norm of 4 squared has to be equal to norm E1 squared if we only have light coming in on port 1. So norm R squared plus norm T squared have to sum up to 1. And that's of course true also for the uh, general case when we have uh, light coming in on both ports E1, E2. The sum of the reflection coefficient magnitude squared and the transmission coefficient magnitude squared, they have to sum up to 1 to fulfill energy conservation in the system. But there's another thing we have to fulfill for energy conservation that might not be so obvious. And if you write down these fields E3, E4 using the input-output relations, you actually also find that RT star plus TR star has to be zero. So both of these equations have to be fulfilled uh, 
uh, in order to satisfy this energy conservation. And this guarantees actually that this transformation matrix we've written down is unitary. All right, so now let's make further assumptions. Let's say this reflection coefficient, that's a magnitude of reflection times the phase factor in the reflection process and the transmission coefficient, the same magnitude of transmission times a phase factor. So now let's look at equation two. So let's call this equation two and let's see what that gives us. So this would give us norm r norm t e to the i phi r minus phi t plus norm r norm t e to the minus i phi r minus phi t has to be zero. We can cancel these coefficients and that just means two times cosine of phi r minus phi t has to be zero and that means that the argument here, the phi r, the phase difference between the reflection and transmission coefficients, for example if that's pi over 2 it would, would fulfill this condition of equation 2 and guarantee the unitarity of our transformation matrix. So let's now go ahead and simplify this further. Let's set phi t, the transmission phase shift that we could acquire to zero, which means that the reflection phase shift we have has to be pi over 2 in order to guarantee unitarity of this transformation matrix. Okay, so now we have the reflection coefficient being norm r times e to the i phi r, e to the i pi over 2, that's just i, this 90 degree phase shift in the reflection process that we have. So we see immediately that the light E3 coming out on port 3, that's now norm E3 multiplied by this phase factor i times E1 plus norm t times E2. And of course the opposite thing for E4, E4 we have t times norm t times E1 plus I norm R E2. Okay, so these are how these fields are related to each other, the fields on port 3 and 4, uh, how they are related to the fields on port 1 and 2. Now in the case where we have a 50-50 beam splitter, the things simplify even more. For a 50-50 beam splitter, this means that if you send in light, let's say only on port 1, 50% of the light comes out on port 3 and 50% of the light comes out on port 4. Okay? So that means that our reflection coefficient norm r squared has to be 1 half and norm t squared has to be also 1 half, so norm r is just 1 over square root 2. So in the case of a 50-50 beam splitter, we just have this very simple transformation matrix between the input and output fields of just 1 over square root 2, i on the diagonals characterizing the 90 degree phase shift in the reflection process and 1 on the off diagonals. And one important thing to remember in the classical case of the beam splitter is that whenever you send in light, for example, just on port 1, we saw that 50% of the light comes out here, 50% of the light comes out here. So whenever you see light on port 3, you always see light on port 4 also. If you have no input light on E2, for example, you just send in light on E1, you always see light on E3 and E4 simultaneously. There can never be a situation where you only see light on E3 uh, and nothing on E4 if you only send in light on E1. So light is just equally split into two parts of equal intensity in the ports 1 and in the ports 3 and 4. And we'll actually see that this is rather very different in the quantum case. We can achieve a result which is completely incompatible with such a classical result. So in the classical case, you always see light coming out on both ports if you send in light only on one of the ports. All right, that's all we wanted to discuss today in the classical beam splitter. So let's move on in the next class and discuss the quantum case. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.